Hey, it's great to be here today. You know, have you ever had that Monday morning when you felt like you just wanted to drive by the church with your resignation all written out, uh, put it in a brown paper bag with a rock and drive by and roll the window down and throw it through the stained glass window? Well, my brothers, Terry and Mark, a lot of times in Oklahoma City, we get together on Monday mornings and we review what goes on in church life. And being that we're from West Virginia, uh, we understood all those Jeff Foxworthy redneck jokes, you know. And so uh, uh, we turned it in one day. Instead of redneck jokes, we decided to just get over a bad attendance count, poor offerings, whatever. We just decided you might be a preacher if, and here's some of them. You might be a preacher if you ever wanted to try multi-level tithing. You might be a preacher if your church is like a box of chocolates, pretty on the outside with nuts on the inside. You might be a preacher if running red lights in a funeral procession makes you feel important. <laughs> you might be a Nazarene preacher if you use the word holy more times than Batman and Robin. <laughs> Here's another one. You might be a preacher if you ever want to give the sound man a little feedback of your own. <laughs> Let's see what else we got up here. You might be a preacher if you secretly wanted the worship team to drench you with Gatorade after a particularly <laughs> good sermon. All right. You might be a preacher with the words, and in conclusion, mean absolutely nothing to you. <laughs> and you might be a preacher if you've ever seen an in memory of played over a commode. Hey, if you got the money, I'll place the plaque. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I would have talked to you about the seven challenges of leadership. And having been a veteran of 14, building programs, uh, I am absolutely aware of the fact that uh, uh, building buildings can be one of the most exciting but also one of the most challenging times in ministry. And so uh, I'm very pleased to talk about seven challenges that I have dealt with as I've moved through the, uh, the leadership steps of guiding people the process of building. Uh, you know, the, uh, there's no perfect time to build a building. Uh, I can remember uh, when interest rates were 3%. That'll tell a little bit about my age and, and deal with the farmers and the farming community when the bank said that they would give us a fixed rate of 5% on our construction loan and it'd be fixed throughout the, the year that it was going to take to build a building that uh, all the farmers said, uh, no, 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 on my church board, they said, you know, it hadn't been ever above 3%. Let's, let's keep that rate on the float. And we did. And unfortunately, there came a day when interest rates hit 21%. And so, you know, there, there's not a perfect time. Uh, what I have discovered is uh, when we build buildings, we don't operate in man's economy, we operate in God's economy. And when we built uh, the facility, uh, Trinity Church of the Nazarene in Oklahoma City, uh, there was a tornado that swept through town just after we put the shovel in the ground and 4,000 homes in and around the church were taken out along with 44 churches and businesses and 22 of my families lost their homes. And so it was one of the worst times in the world to try to build a building and yet that building stands as a testimony of God's faithfulness and the resolve of people. But I believe that leadership begins first of all with conformity. And if I might be a preacher for just a moment myself, there's a passage in Romans 12, 1 and 2 that speaks to us about this conformity. It says, be not, uh, be not conformed to the world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. In fact, I, I wrote a book back on the table called Rethink Your Life, and it's based on Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, and it deals with uh, the idea of going on a mind diet for 30 days. Well, I believe that when you get ready to build a, a church building, you've got to settle the conformity issue, uh, and that going to prayer is always a critical part. BGW Forward in Faith, uh, led by Dr. Terry Bates, is a wonderful capital stewardship program. But it's bathed in prayer. It's built on prayer vigils. It, it calls people to, to conform to Christ. Here's some questions, and I believe they're in your notes as well, that I've asked myself over a period of time concerning conformity. We'll put them on the screen for you. Uh, questions that I have gone through time and time again uh, as I have uh, led people through the process of doing ministry. I guess they're not on the screen, so Micah, you can cut this later, all right? Are the questions on your, in your notes? 
All right, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it alone then since I don't have them in front of me. But ultimately these questions uh, resolve where I stand in terms of my leadership. Let's look, the first one is the greatest prerequisite of leadership is allowing Christ to be our pattern. And secondly, the greatest challenge of leadership is knowing and following Christ. And so I ask the question in your notes, do my programs and methods honor God? Uh, in fact, I would say, is this building program going to be God honoring at the end of the day? If we build it, will people come? Is it something that, that will reach into the hearts and lives of other individuals? Next screen, please, as we, here's the questions. Is Christ the Lord of my life? Am I trying to operate on His strength or mine? Do I consistently seek the wisdom of His Word? Do I talk to Him in prayer before I talk to the people? And the next screen, please. Am I relying on the power of His Holy Spirit? Are there hidden things in my life that I need to confess? Am I in fellowship with His people? Is He first in my planning process? Every committee meeting, every board meeting, every building team meeting, everything should be bathed in prayer. Lord, we want to conform to Your mind and, and get the right uh, building and the right plan going. And then I said, uh, do my programs and methods honor Him. We'll move to the next screen. And that second challenge of leadership is courage. I'm not a courageous person. Uh, in fact, as uh, sometimes I look at the Old Testament characters, uh, and I wrote a book that's titled, I Love God's Sense of Humor, I Just Wish You'd Let Me In on the Joke, and, and uh, I, uh, I liken myself to, to Gideon, uh, because when, when God uh, uh, looked at Gideon and tapped him on the shoulder, you know, the parallel in my life is I was born in the, in the poor city uh, in the United States, Welch, West Virginia. Uh, my dad was a coal miner. Uh, you know, we existed on, on uh, government commodities, and, and when the mines were open, then we were able to trade at the company store with coal mining dollars. And, and I would never have dreamed that a 40 year pastoral ministry and my current responsibilities would have come together in this manner, or that I'd ever write the first book. Uh, but in reality, when you conform to Christ, He gives you the courage because, you know, Gideon said, I got a small band of people here, and, and, and who am I among so many? So courage is very, very important. Now, there's some courage builders that I'd like to give you. The first one is what I call vision, uh, and that is the ability to see the future. If you're able to cast vision with the members of your congregation, I can assure you that you, you can get on the path to, to doing the building project you have in mind. Uh, when I was uh, uh, young in the ministry and being through 14 building programs, I can say today most all of them started on a napkin in a restaurant. Let me borrow a pen, you unfold a paper napkin and you start drawing. And I think actually the very first church was not done by an architect, but, but a couple of us in a room where we did, just did a very uh, square box kind of building and built from that. I was 22 years old. I didn't know any better. And so we just thought we can do this thing and, and off we went. Uh, but, but it's moved through uh, renderings and charrettes and line drawings today. Uh, BGW, Don Mahoney and Dan, and Dan uh, Cook are calling it Captivision. And I like that a whole lot better than anything I've ever heard because if you can, if you can help people see what it's going to look like, Pastors, you know that Fred Craddock wrote a book that talks about the aha moment in a sermon. Uh, that when people are listening to you share your message, all of a sudden uh, you're, uh, you're connecting and the Spirit is helping you connect. And, and in that moment they go, oh, I get it, aha, uh -huh. you know, there it is. And, and I've always found that, that you need some type of image to let people know what this building is going to look like, something to dream about. And I think that starts long before uh, you would ever uh, start putting a shovel in the ground and building. They need to see that. They need to understand it. And with all the animation and technology and everything that's going your direction uh, these days, you can communicate well vision, then as they build to see the future.